2018 has been a banner year for marijuana legislation in North America. In the U.S., 10 states and Washington, D.C. have legalized recreational marijuana, while 33 states have legalized medical marijuana. A recent survey found that 62% of Americans, including 74% of millennials, supported legalizing cannabis. And Canada legalized marijuana federally in October in the hope of curbing the illegal trade in it. But the country is facing a shortage of legal cannabis after the change, forcing some to turn to illegal dealers. Industry insiders say the shortage may last for years due to stringent regulations. Well, for more on this topic, we're joined by Garth Van Meter, Vice President of Government Affairs at Smart Approaches to Marijuana. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. So let's start with what's happening in Mexico. Where do things currently stand and why is what's happening there important? Well, it's, it's important to note that the Supreme Court's action is not a requirement for the legalization and commercialization of retail sales of marijuana in Mexico. Uh, instead, it's something much more like decriminalization. And that's an important distinction because I think there is a, an emerging consensus around people not going to prison for simple possession of, of marijuana, that people who have drug problems should, be, uh, should receive treatment and get into recovery. Uh, and you know, that there should be alternatives to incarceration. Uh, when it comes to commercialization, though, I think we're seeing much more of a path towards uh, a, a model similar to big tobacco from the past, where young people are targeted and uh, there's, there's a goal of addiction for profit. And certainly important to make that distinction, because when you hear legalizing, obviously there's a lot of nuance depending on, on the ultimate goal of some of these laws. Now, let's start with um, Canada's Prime Minister Trudeau, who said that really passing the marijuana laws was more about cracking down on the illegal trade than looking at the economic benefits. And obviously, Mexico is hoping to follow suit. But in terms of seeing the fruits of that in impacting the illegal trade, what could we be looking at? Sure. Well, we're obviously not seeing it yet, as there's a shortage of legal marijuana in, in uh, Canada. And so that's driving people back to the black market. But even in many of the, the states that have legalized marijuana in the United States, uh, Colorado, Oregon, California in particular, uh, the black market has not gone away. Uh, and if anything, it, it seems to be thriving and even, in, even increasing. There is a, in a report by the Oregon State Police that says over 70 percent of the transactions in Oregon are still on the black market. And so that's several years after marijuana was legalized in that state. Oh, that, that seems counterintuitive. If you, if you have a place where it's legal to still see a black market thriving, why, why are we seeing that dichotomy? Uh, the black market can always undercut the, the, the legal market in terms of taxes and, and regulations that they don't have to comply with. Uh, and so they have those established channels and they continue to use them. And as we look at Canada one month into the passing of its laws, how is it faring? Uh, well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it, we're, we're so, it's, it's such a new thing. Uh, and obviously, there is an established infrastructure with medical marijuana. A lot of those companies are just switching over into the recreational marijuana business. Uh, and unfortunately, they're poised to transfer a lot of their technology and product ideas, uh, like edibles and candies and gummies and things like that. Those are not legal yet, uh, but they will be uh, with, within a year in, in Canada. And we expect those products to come to market as well. Now, as we see the door slightly creaking open in the U.S., we know that a lot of um, U.S. lawmakers were essentially hedging their bets until what happened with the midterm. So with the midterm elections behind us, how do you see this issue progressing in the U.S.? Uh, so now the House is under Democratic control. And so we will expect to see more activity in, in the House in terms of hearings, uh, possible amendments to bills in order to try to protect the marijuana industry or give it banking access, different things like that. Uh, but it, the Senate is still under Republican control, and so it's not clear that anything will ultimately, ultimately make it to the president's desk. Now, we know that after U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions was ousted, we saw a lot of marijuana advocates and companies essentially celebrating, and we saw cannabis stocks shoot up. And we know that Donald Trump really is a pro-business president. Is it too soon to celebrate where this might all be heading? I, I, I think it is. We'll have to wait and see who he nominates, uh, because as, as an acting attorney general, there's not much opportunity to change course uh, in terms of policy. And so we'll have to see who he nominates for the next position. And so as we've talked about the stocks, let's talk about marijuana stocks as an investment. How is that industry faring? Uh, well, yeah, we've already seen a lot of consolidation. Uh, we've seen direct investment from the tobacco industry into the marijuana industry in, in Canada already. 
Uh, and so those are, we, I would see those as disturbing early signs that the industry is becoming much more um, corporate, but it, it, it's also uh, becoming much more disciplined and in terms of marketing and advertising. And is that necessarily a bad thing that it's becoming more corporate? Well, the, I mean, the, the, the challenge is that uh, the, the market dynamics inevitably direct them towards younger and younger customers. And, and in Canada, the, the legal age is, uh, is 19. The brain is still developing at 19. There's a high potential for, for addiction, and that's good for the company in that they get a lifelong customer, uh, sort of a, you know, a, a captive customer. But uh, in terms of public health, it's, it's bad for you know, the, the rest of society. And how difficult is it to, to navigate investing in some of these companies and these supplemental companies involved in the industry when it is still illegal in so many places? Um, yeah, so that, that certainly poses a, a great deal of risk and uncertainty, uh, and that's keeping a lot of the, uh, the, the hedge funds and people in the capital markets out of it. Uh, but it, from our standpoint, that's probably a positive development because the, the more money goes into the industry, the more, the, the, the more quickly it will grow uh, and, and again, we think that's bad for public health. All right, thank you so much. Very insightful there. Garth Van Meter, Vice President of Government Affairs at Smart Approaches to Marijuana.